Hello, ex Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I always look at this side of the camera. I should be looking at this side of the camera. You'd think the little circle would give it away. It never does. You've come to expect it now. I hope you're all doing very well. I'm still preparing for my trip to uh, to Warwick soon. I'll be down in uh, in uh, the headquarters of Jehovah's Witness Land on the uh, 3rd or sort of late on the 3rd of November. I look forward to meeting all of you who are coming. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, I wanted to talk about the new changes for the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm going to bring these in a bit closer because you feel a bit distant. Hang on. There we go. You can see my ugly mug a bit better now. Okay, so I don't know about you, but whenever I left the Witnesses and, you know, and I had those, those end of Jehovah's Witness fantasies that many of us share, I imagined it would be a bit like that church. I've forgotten the name of it, but they, they actually were very like the Witnesses. And they ended up just admitting they were wrong and wrote a, quite a sincere, heartfelt apology for all the harm they'd caused. And I thought at the time, wow, wouldn't that be lovely if the Witnesses did that? I wouldn't go back, but at least, you know, it could have some closure about the whole thing, you know. Uh, and then hopefully, you know, if they're decent human beings, they'll, they'll try and make amends for the harm they've caused as best as, best as possible. Obviously, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Disabuse yourself of that right away. But... What instead seems to be happening is, I've got a bit of a cold, so pardon, please forgive me if I inadvertently sniff. Uh, what it seems instead they're going to be doing is they're going to just dumb themselves down and reduce themselves to a rump of Jehovah's Witnesses. Maybe that they can, and maybe they can bring on new members in African places where, you know, the internet's not such a big thing to destroy them or something. I, I'm, I'm really not sure. But a lot of this is coming now from the new arrangements. So... When I was a kid, and I'm not making this up, some of you I'm sure did the same thing, some of you didn't, wicked worldly kids. I actually spent one, like one large period of my summer holidays as a child looking back through the big bound volumes of the Watchtower and Awake because I wanted to read everything that we had produced. And I mean, I was looking back to those books from the, you know, the mid 60s, I think it was, I'm not sure how long they started them, but my family had them from the mid or late, the, the, the late 60s. And I was reading these old ones. I wanted to get a grip on our understanding and just really know everything, understand 1914. So I sat there in the sun, flipping through these bound volumes because this was going to give me something, you know, some, some education. God forbid I actually had got a good education. But uh, I was looking through this stuff. And now, I, I, I mean, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know that, because they're not going to be doing this anymore. They're not going to be having... I mean, they've done away with those big yearly editions of The Watchtower and Awake. But now they're, they seem to be doing away with The Watchtower and Awake. In fits and starts, it's going to become, you know, this, this new one episode every three months, is it? Or every two months? Every three months, I think. Which seems bizarre. I mean, you're going to get so bored. I remember sitting... You know, you know how the magazines never came week on week on week? They would come like nothing for a month and then whoa you've got six issues all came remember that well i would sit at the front of the hall while everyone else was chatting looking through my six issues reading them all oh just after the meeting had ended you know and everyone was talking i was like oh look new food new stuff to read it's so exciting and i would read this stuff and, and now I, I don't know how to feel about the kids nowadays i mean i can only hope that it's uh, it's yet another encouragement for them to leave because you know there's there's even less of a uh, you know of stimulation of some kind of even a, even a false sense of uh, of intelligence about the organization and i wonder why they're doing this okay uh some people have talked about money okay it's it's all down to money and they need and i recently did the jw podcast and that's where we came down on the issue pretty much money they, they need a lot of money for all these these sexual assault charges and you know class action lawsuits that are, that are springing up and i get that uh, but I actually read something on uh, JehovahsWitnesses.com and I thought it was a really good point. So I hope the person doesn't mind. Uh, but I wanted to read their point and then mention it a wee bit. And the fellow who said it, I'm not going to say his name in case you know he's, he's hidden. I don't think he is. But he says, when discussing the Watchtower's financial problems, I've generally been of the opinion that they are probably are not in a real financial crisis. All right? And that's probably true because, I mean, they do have thousands of properties. I've come, you know, if not tens of thousands, I've come to believe that money may be something of an issue, but it's wrapped up in a much larger problem. And he says, this came to me 
this morning when reading the annual meet, re reading about the annual meeting, of course, is where all their new information came from. I think the society's leadership is just plain out of ideas. For a very long time, they have had some people who could churn out new stuff for publication. I remember it. You had Fred Franz. And I, and I don't know about you, but whenever Fred Franz died, I mean, I'm still very young, but Fred Franz still had a, he had a long shadow. And the people who came after him, you know, Henschel and people like that, is it Henschel, Milton, something or other? They, they, didn't, they didn't have it. And they didn't even want it. They didn't want it to take his reins. It's like the, the face of the organization. They were just old men content to sit in the background. But I'll go back to this point because I think it's a good one. A lot, if not all, uh, of what they taught was bullshit. But at least it was original. And that's true. I can remember everybody combing every talk, book, magazine, etc. for new light. Yes, we did. I haven't seen a new thought in ages. The literature is dumbed down and repetitive. And I think they're cutting back on magazines not to save money, but because nobody can think of anything to put in them. This does have a financial component. The business world is changing and they don't have anybody that can think of a replacement for their old business model. This lack of ideas may be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Some loyalists will stay, others will start looking for a group of fresh ideas, new interpretations, etc. If they start poaching members to whatever new brand of BS has struck their fancy, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is in big trouble. The crowd will go for what's new, exciting and a lot more entertaining. Well, I, I, I think that's a really good point. And it's something that hadn't really occurred to me, but there is a real intellectual, you know, malaise, a real loss of uh, of vitality about the Jehovah's Witnesses. Certainly, you know, and it's not since I left. Don't worry, it's it's since the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, you know, probably since since Fred Franz was an old man. You know, since Raymond Franz broke away, and I think that probably uh, you know that was the start of the slide. You know, because I think he, Raymond Franz had some. Raymond Franz had some had some gusto about him. He had a bit of mustard on him, and he could have continued things. You know, if he'd have stayed in the in the governing body, uh, obviously he'd be dead now. Though. But it seems that the people who then came on from him were just uh, more and more of the same, and and less and less interesting, uh, until you've now got this this organization, which you know what it, pro it prints a couple of magazines. What what happened to all the stuff that we were taught as kids? We were taught that the Jehovah's Witnesses are the biggest publishing organization that's ever been known. <clears throat> that we do, you know, we, we did so much. We were also taught, and I did bring this up in the pod podcast, we were also taught that the ordinary man on the street, or woman on the street, if we dared to mention you, uh, that, that you could not understand the Bible. Don't even try. It's too complex for you and your little mind. You need, to, you need the, the, the written word. From the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, you need our constant explanations and encouragements, and that's how you're gonna you're gonna win the race and walk the, the narrow road to life. That's what we were taught, and uh, and now, well, what's the argument now? So you, what, your information is so vital that you don't even need to bother printing it. it seems some, you got some explaining to do. It's my best Ricky Ricardo voice. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's really interesting. I, I, I wonder what the New Jehovah's Witnesses... The one thing I would disagree with on this chap is where he says that people will leave. I mean, people won't leave because they've still got the disfellowshipping, you know? And you're not going to leave and say, hey, the Mormons have got or, or where it's at if it means you're going to lose your kids. That's not happening. So, uh, I mean, you could find that you're just going to have an awful lot of very bored, very disinterested people looking at the same literature day in, day out. Well, guys... Thank you very much for watching The Great Apostate. I hope you're doing well. I've been a bit slow doing videos. It's not because I'm lazy. It's not. It's uh, I'm, I'm busy with work. I'm busy with my family. Uh, I'm not going to stop. Uh, I am actually also busy, you know, doing XJW stuff on sort of, not in secret, but, you know, the stuff that's not too visible where I'm chatting to people online and stuff. Uh, so that's taken up quite a lot of my time. And I'm also preparing for my trip to America, which is going to be like a homecoming for me because... Uh, as I also said in the JW podcast, my dream as a child one day was to work at the headquarters of the world religion. And, uh, and um, it's almost, I feel like I'm coming home. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm, am I, am I the prodigal son who's not repented? Yeah, probably, but I'm coming home anyway. I'm coming, Watchtower! Prodigal son's on his way! Guys, thanks very much. I hope you have a lovely day. I wish you all the best and a wonderful October. It's only begun. Get out and live it. Take care.